I'm Dr. Leanne Kessler, a consultant specializing in science communication and the evaluation of superconducting materials. It's Friday, September 25th, and it's time for your Fusion News Update. Stories today include 1. Fusion reactors go small for a trip to market. 2. House Democrats unveil clean energy package ahead of floor vote. 3. Why are oil and gas companies investing in nuclear fusion? 4. Inertial confinement fusion implosions have significant 3D asymmetries. I also have a few bonuses for you at the end, so stick around. Number 1. Fusion reactors go small for a trip to market. Urged on by the U.S. Department of Energy, or DOE, a top-level committee of U.S. scientists has begun planning for a pilot fusion reactor plant that is smaller than the standard designs, such as ITER. The new goal is the development of compact, affordable fusion reactors that could be widely deployed by utilities in the second half of this century. As investment in private fusion increases, the rising expectations of the fusion industry have prompted DOE policymakers, supported by Congress, to begin advocating for U.S. ownership of future fusion reactor designs. The article is based on an interview with British physicist Stephen Cowley, who heads the DOE-backed Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory in New Jersey where one of the competing designs for a utility-scale fusion reactor is under development. This design tries to find a way to shrink the size of other designs, like ITER. Cowley said, We know that if you make it big enough, fusion will work. We're trying to push down the scale at which you can get to fusion conditions. Number 2. House Democrats unveil clean energy package ahead of floor vote. U.S. lawmakers are due to vote this week on the Clean Economy and Jobs Innovation Act or HR 4447, which aims to support green technologies and infrastructure. We hope to be able to tell you more about the outcome next time, but if you can't wait, check out our website or follow us on Twitter for updates. Representatives Connor Lamb and Lori Trahan proposed an amendment on fusion energy research that explicitly calls for the funding of investigations into commercial fusion power plants, including extending the Infuse program for public-private partnerships, funding explorations into inertial confinement fusion and alternative concepts, and maintaining U.S. involvement with ITER. Additionally, this amendment requests a milestone-based program supporting the U.S. fusion power industry, which would be based on the NASA COTS program that ultimately enabled the success of SpaceX. The Fusion Industry Association has been advocating for this since 2018. This legislation is very important for fusion and the entire global energy system. More details can be found on the Fusion Industry Association website, so please check out the link below. Number three, why are oil and gas companies investing in nuclear fusion? This article in Green Tech Media explores the multiple investments from oil and gas companies into private fusion enterprises, including Chevron's recent backing of Zap Energy and both ENI and Equinor's support of Commonwealth Fusion Systems. The article discusses the similarities between the development of oil and gas technologies and fusion, along with the long-term economic benefits of investment in fusion energy. Benj Conway of Zap Energy says, fusion investment should be considered long-term, not because commercial fusion is decades away, but because fusion energy has the potential to be the energy sector for the coming centuries. Number four, inertial confinement fusion implosions have significant 3D asymmetries. Researchers at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California have made a step forward in understanding a mismatch between predicted performance of inertial confinement fusion and experimental results. Inertial confinement fusion, or ICF, is a form of fusion energy that uses powerful lasers to compress a fuel capsule. The compression causes a massive increase in density and temperature, ideally resulting in a sustained fusion reaction. Unfortunately, scientists at Lawrence Livermore have found that when they compress the fuel, the capsule collapses unevenly, resulting in lower pressures and fusion yields than predicted. Hans Rindernecht and Dan Casey, along with other colleagues, used the comparisons of two different diagnostics to show that there is a correlation between the implosion velocity, the speed at which the capsule collapses, and the asymmetry of the fuel. This could potentially give scientists a way to alter the experimental design to compensate for the asymmetry, and thus increase both the pressure and the fusion yield. Finally, let's check out some bonus fusion news in social media and podcasts. First. Phoenix, a Wisconsin-based company that manufactures fusion neutron generators for medical isotope production and other applications, did a Reddit AMA on the engineering subreddit. Their team answered questions from users about fusion and other related topics. Also, 
Dennis White, the director of the Plasma Science Infusion Center at MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, was featured on the Today I Learned Climate podcast, produced by MIT. Professor White discussed the challenges associated with successfully developing fusion energy, along with the potential applications for fighting climate change, saying, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that economic fusion energy changes the world. It changes humanity's relationship to energy and how we use energy. Finally, there's a new article in Popular Mechanics on NASA's research into lattice confinement fusion, including a short video. We talked more about lattice confinement in fusion news on August 14th, so check out that video linked below for more information. That's all for fusion news this week. Please subscribe to our channel for more fusion news and check out the links in the description below if you want further information.